intelligence agencies, and, and this is actually a, a matter of record in America that they have actually done this. Now, what that means that all UFOs have explained in terms of intelligence agency manipulation is uh, another question, but certainly some have been. Um, um, a lot of people don't realize that one of the things that intelligence agencies do, particularly American, particularly in CIA, is they like to experiment with belief systems, just in the sense of, you know, if they're going to war with a, a country of a, or, or they want to manipulate events in a country with a particular faith, um, you know, uh, I think Cuba was very Catholic, it looked like, you know, there, there was uh, some thought, you know, could they manipulate visions of the Virgin Mary to their advantage. Right. Uh, you know, now if you're going to war with an Islamic country, is there something about it, the belief that you could that you could use? So they're very interested in the way that beliefs and ideas originate and how they're spread. And and to be frank in some bits, you know, it's how you know, how mad an idea you can make people believe for how long. Mm. They like they, and there's definite evidence that um, you know the CIA have experimented with this creating cults giving them completely mad ideas and seeing what happens to them. You oh, yeah. Know, and create, create a doomsday cult, see what happens when doomsday doesn't appear, because it's of something that they like to know. Of course. Yes, actually, can... I mean, don't get us wrong, we're not complete sceptics about, um, you know, paranormal or mystical things. Right. And certainly there does appear to be an element, not so, again, you know, we've got to be very careful, but an, an element of some UFO sightings um, that, that is basically paranormal. Um, you know that that, that um, and it, and they behave the, some of these cases uh, in very similar ways to the old you know stories about fairies appearing and you know um, goblins appearing or whatever. Um, and it's, there does seem to be some part of the human uh, mind or psyche that, in, that maybe interacts with other forces. But it doesn't mean what it doesn't mean. You know, if you see a UFO and it's actually a sort of up-to-date version of an old um, appearance of a fairy kind of thing, you know, um, it, it, I don't understand why people automatically assume if they see something strange in the sky that it means it's come from another galaxy or another star system. Right. Why, why, why does it have to be extraterrestrial? Right. Well, exactly. That's a good, very good point. And uh, again, I mean, we are not at this point, uh, uh, you know, privy to know all the all the. Uh, inner workings of, of some of these black ops that are, you know, having trillions, if you will, of, of, of dollars at their disposal. And uh, we don't know how, how far the the, uh, the research has gone and the progress has gone in regards to these uh, technologies. So we could very very well look at, at, at a scenario right now where, where you know, if hovering crafts appear, uh, crafts appear, everyone thinks automatically that this is ET, extraterrestrial, uh, but again, it might be might be human made, and of course, what we can point out is that there is one uh, thing called Project Bluebeam, where there apparently is a, is a is an old program going back many years that that uh, dived into this idea of uh, uh, actually faking or staging an alien invasion, uh, and also in correlation with that, actually projecting religious uh, images with uh, holographic technology. So. There's a wide variety of these kind of ideas going around, if you will, in, in the defense industry, definitely. Well, yes. I mean, as far back as 19, I think it was 1968, there was a vision, apparently, of the Virgin Mary, um, seen by hundreds and hundreds of people in Cairo, over one of the very few churches in Cairo. Um, and it was, it, this, it was, first of all, one of a workman in the street thought there was a nun on the roof in difficulties, and, and so he went and got some friends and all, standing, you know, hoping to help. And then they realised that it was, uh, it wasn't a, a nun. It just looked like somebody, you know, a woman in a in a long dress and a, a veil. Um, but she was sort of fairly see-through, and she kind of bobbed along the the, the edge of the roof. Um, and but the vision was there, I think, on and off, but but mainly on, mainly there for about ten days. And people came and they saw it and they took photographs and um, and they went away and then it just went away. Hmm. Um, and it does sound like somebody was having, well, I was going to say a joke, but, you know, um, quite, a, quite a serious one. And, and what you were just saying about, you know, projecting holograms, that, that I always thought reading that story that that was obviously a very early example of, um, you know, this kind of experiment. Right, definitely. And um, there is another, I guess, uh, uh, strand to this as well, if we go back and talk about m modern Egyptology and the uh, what are they called the guardians, right? Doctor Sawi uh, Sahai Hawass, um, 
and, and there is a connection potentially between him, if I understand things correctly, between him and the uh, ARE, the, the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Is, isn't that right? Uh, yes, again, there's a, this whole kind of complex of connections. And <clears throat> yet again, have to be very careful and say you, you don't necessarily who, know who's pulling strings or having strings being pulled. Um, but one of the things we're looking at, there's a whole, almost exactly 10 years ago, you know, there was this whole kind of debate going on where you had um, the alter- what they, they called the alternative Egyptologists, you know, people like Robert Boval and Graham Hancock, and who were arguing for this, um, you know, uh, one that Egyptian civilization has a much greater history going back to a lost civilization, um, and that it, you know, it, it has some kind of relevance for us today. So that was kind of one group of people, and then you had the um, the kind of slightly more uh, new agey religious sorts like the Edgar Casey people, the Association for Research and Enlightenment, um, who had another set of beliefs to do with um, ancient Egypt, and you had the you know, the, the academic historians who were saying, uh, or academic Egyptologists who were saying, no, nope, you know, we know everything pretty much there is to know about ancient Egypt. We know when the pyramids were built. All this talk of, um, you know, a thousand years uh, older history and Atlantis and, and all these prophecies by this guy is all kind of rubbish. And you have these kind of groups debating and arguing um, amongst themselves. But when you actually looked into it, um, the connections between the people on the supposedly on different sides of the debate you know, they were much more closely connected than you, than you thought. Like a couple of the leading um, Egyptologists involved in this debate um, had been um, uh, funded or in some cases educated by the ARE, the Edgar Casey people. Um, but they were the ones that now sort of very, very publicly saying, all that stuff to do with Edgar Casey is nonsense. You know, um, <clears throat> um, and some of the connections just got kind of so odd and also, you know, then there were other connections with people who were connected with um, channeling cults. By it, they involved people that were actually supposed to be channeling the ancient Egyptian gods who were revealing themselves to be extraterrestrials. And we found that basically the same people that were supposed to be on opposing sides, you know, one alternative and one defending the kind of orthodox position, um, were much more closely connected than they ought to be which gave you the idea that somebody behind all of it was just making this debate happen. You know, cause the, and the best way to get um, uh, people interested in ideas out <clears throat> is for people to have a really big argument about them. <laughs> right. People write books just saying, we believe the pyramids are many thousand years older than everyone says. That's one thing. But then you get somebody on the establishment side standing up and saying, you shouldn't be reading these books, you know, because they are full of false information, that actually raises the profile of everybody. Right. We really found that, you know, that there was people were being moved almost like chess pieces, mm. some knowingly, some uh, unknowingly. You know? um, and that's what gave us this idea that actually it was the whole thing was being manipulated. For what end? I mean, so we, the way we looked at it is something I'd like to come back to in a moment. Um, that was kind of creating a new religion, a new age type of religion, if mm, you like. Yeah. Um, it could be just an experiment as, you know, on a very grand scale to see what happens when we see these ideas in, who accepts them, who doesn't. And um, let's not forget, I mean, the, the, the kind of basis um, of um, the, the new age, in a way, is, is self-help. And it's, it's, you know, it's sort of a Gnostic understanding, really. It's, it's a great hunger for, for knowledge and, and for really overturning the, the, the certainties of what we've been told, mm. um, which, of course, is very admirable. But, the, but then um, it seems that, you know, people have a hunger for being told what to do, basically. And they, they mm. you know, a lot of New Agers, not saying everybody, but a, a lot of New Agers have this thing that they basically they want to be told what to do by some kind of guru yeah. who then will take over their lives. And, you know, we've, we've all come across them who absolutely, you know, they will say, well, you know, we went to the uh, so-and-so channel the other day and he said, we have to do this. Yeah. And you say to them, but, you know, you, you, why don't you think for yourself? They said, no, because he said, you know, and, and it was so-and-so, it was one of the gods c- coming through him and we have to do this. No matter how mad it will sound, they will do it. Hmm. 
you know, and and that was the sort of thinking behind um, the setting up of, uh, or at least so it seems, of several sort of doomsday type cults. Um, a couple of which we talk about in Stargate Conspiracy, <clears throat> where basically um, the little group sort of grew up around the channeler. Um, and, and they were given increasingly as the millennium, well, not the millennium, but as, the, as a certain day which was going to be very big in their lives. You know, they were told, I don't know, like February the 13th or something was, was, was going to be the end of the world. Um, and, you know, and they, would, uh, and they were told by the god or the spirit that was coming through the channeler who was their, their leader, um, you know, to, for example, um, to remove all, all metal from their clothing and to sell, and even more seriously, you know, sell their property and live in trees. And it, it sounds bonkers, sounds completely mad now, but people were actually told to do these things, and they did them. Right. And, of course, then February, the whenever, came and went. And the world didn't end, and there they were up trees with no property, you know, and um, no, no money because they've done all these things. And one of the interesting things, of course, specifically to groups like, um, you know, puppet masters like the CIA, is what happens then. Because they've been proved wrong. So how do they regroup? Do they regroup? What's the psychology behind regrouping? And that in itself is hugely interesting. Yeah, indeed. And uh, uh, I can remind everyone, of course, of the... Uh of the cult called uh, Heaven's Gate, you know, <laughs> give away in the name potentially right there. Yeah. That was Marshall Applewhite in, back in, when was it, 1997, I think he uh, uh, killed himself with a, with a bunch of, of, of people. And that seems to be at this point pointing towards definitely some involvement behind uh, an, an intelligence group on, on that one, you know, so. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you can imagine the, the the value to, you know, intelligence agencies and governments of the less scrupulous kind of, that ability to control people to the point that they will actually commit suicide for you, um, you know, to, to find out how you can pull people's strings to that degree, is something that they, you know, they want to know that. How far can you actually make people do this? Right. Uh, so it's kind of motivations for it, yeah. So it's, it's a potentially a combination between uh, f- finding out how much you can control a population and at the same time... Uh, Kind of bringing in uh, the the ideas of of of, uh, of a new age religion for the, for that sense, uh, because in a way actually we can maybe connect it with with the previous segment that we did because we talked about there that we're actually in one way kind of un- uncovering a lot of the uh, the the background history of Jesus and Christianity itself. So what they might be interested in at this point is to uh, as the veils of mystery, if you will, falls from the old uh, created religion of Christianity, as that falls apart in a way, uh, they want to create something new that people can can uh, can worship and venerate. Potentially, any comments? Well, yeah, yes. I mean, obviously, in, in the context of, of what we're talking about, in the context of our book Stargate Conspiracy, and the whole idea of working up to the millennium or, or 2012, which is the next big one, and the the idea of um, providing people with with something as you say, up to date, a new, quote, religion, although they might not think of it as a religion, of course, um, but it's like the way, you know, it's the way forward, the one and only thing in their lives after a while. And this thing, what could it be? What, what's the most up-to-date sort of thing? Well, um, you know, I mean, certainly things seen in the sky, you know, um, UFOs, which are, are by, you know, by themselves incredibly futuristic looking. We all think we know what they look like, you know, they're sort of cigar-shaped or they're, or they're round. Um, and you see one of those and you think, you think future, don't you? You think very modern, you think up-to-date. Right. So um, maybe, you know, these images are being projected wherever they're being seen, projected deliberately in order to whip up interest and see how different people react. You know, because it's a, the whole thing is a psychological experiment. It's about the human psyche. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, as I say, when, when doomsday comes and goes and nothing happens, you know, what happens to the people who really believed in it? Not just the, you know, the financial, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but there's but the, the, the social um, meltdown um, that, you know, you might expect would would happen when the the thing that they've been working towards that they put you know everything into just failed to happen. But I suppose, as you were saying, I mean, compared to the um, um, the Heaven's Gate um, horrors, you know, basically losing, selling all your property and sitting up a tree isn't you know isn't that grim. Um, but I mean, the Heaven's Gate thing um, it just shows you how far you can push people. And of course, we mustn't forget those people were happy to commit suicide. They were ecstatic when they did it. Yeah. Very similar 